like to call to order the Tuesday, October 25th, 2022 meeting of the Sheboygan County Board of Supervisors. Are we certified in compliance with the open meeting law? We are. The agenda was posted on the 21st of October at 10.30 a.m. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Of the United States of America and to the Republic, for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next is roll call. Yes, I am. All right, Supervisor Immel. Supervisor Schobert. I am present. Thank you. Uh, possibly Supervisor Smith. Any other supervisors that can hear my voice? Please chime in. Next is presentations. We have none. County Administrator's Report. Good evening. Tonight is my objective to share the 2023 proposed budget. Some of what you're going to hear is going to sound familiar, and some of it is going to be new. Can we tee that up? Chris Lewinsky in the back room. It was just there. Of course, if we can't get it up on the screen, we, we can't have a there budget, is. right? <laughs> All right, very good. Thank you. So what you have heard me say in the past is that The county budget is the most important policy document that we prepare and that you adopt. I think it's fair to say that we think about the that many of them appreciate or recognize that in Sheboygan County we have about 850 employees working in 19 departments administering over 207 programs and services. Services ranging from law enforcement, transportation, health and human services, planning, resources. It's just remarkable the breadth of responsibility and all the good that occurs in our organization to further strengthen our community. It's remarkable to be a part of it. And next week, you will be adopting, once again, an annual budget that supports this organization, that supports the very important work of our team, and that continues to do the good work in our community. And personally, I'm, I'm really proud to be a part of that, and I hope you are too. Take a look in the back of the room for a moment. Most of the people in the back of the room are department heads or key leaders that have been involved in the budget development process. Some of them you know quite well. You know Corey Ray, probably know Greg Schnell, our transportation director. Ryan, who works in uh, family court commissioner's office. Some of them certainly are in front of you a little bit more than often. I was looking back and seeing Star from Public Health. And I 
right? The pandemic largely, well, it's largely, but entirely in the back view mirror. But we have such a good team here. We have such a good team. I was sharing with the executive committee today that every now and then I get a chance to interact with my peers. I was just doing so last week. And there are such differences, profound differences in governance in county to county. Our constituents, your constituents, maybe all of us do. The team we have here. So the budget development. Where do you want me to point this, Cheryl? How's that? There's the big picture. I can't believe I'm saying, really for the first time in proposing the 2023 budget, $182 million budget. This is as high as I can recall it ever being when you look at the overall complexity and size of our organization. A lot going on. And you can see for yourself, there it is. Look at the resources that are going to support transportation, our sheriff's department, health and human services. But I call those farmers. People ask you as they're elected. Start with those four. Very important, large departments that are doing very, very important work. I don't know if I've ever seen an election cycle where I've seen as much focus on the importance of public safety. So proud of our track record and the work that our Sheriff's Department does. Health and Human Services, Mental Health Program Services. Wow, does our team do good work. And transportation. It wasn't that long ago we were all struggling with how are we going to fund and maintain our transportation system and the board mustered the political will to implement the half percent sales tax and now we have a transportation department and operation that other counties would sure like to replicate. We're in good shape. You look at that overall proposed budget of 182 to maintain, largely maintain our programs and services. Where's the property tax levy go? Well, our total property tax levy proposed to be about 52 million. Look at the difference in that pie chart now. What a difference there. How they're relying on state and federal grants, sales tax revenue, not utilizing much property tax levy at all. But to hold the line on property taxes and to work within our budget limitations has taken a tremendous amount of teamwork, collaboration, and we have been able to hold the line year after year after year. As you know, and I, I hope more of your constituents and people in our community realize, is that if you look at the last 10 years or so, we've had what, 1.2, 1.3% increases on average. It's been remarkable. It's been remarkable. For 2023, it's a proposed to be a 1.66% property tax levy. Less than 2%. That's good work. Focusing on the tax rate for a moment, and then we'll return to the levy. I personally consider myself to be a little competitive. I think there's people in this room that are competitive. We like to be amongst the best that county government has to offer. We have really striven to provide good quality programs and services at a cost-effective, affordable price. And I think our constituents keep an eye on Anybody, it's a little chilly in here, isn't it?
know. Did Jim to Beast not turn the heat up before we got in here? It feels a little cool to me. Put this out of the closet today. <laughs> Trunk. I don't know what it is. is. Is it when you hang things in the closet, they just get a little smaller? When I tried this on this morning, it felt just a little bigger. Right? So, yeah, my question is, if you look at that tax rate of 437, I think we'll just leave that open. If you look at that tax rate of 437, when do you think is the last time we had a tax rate? that low or lower. When has Sheboygan County delivered a property tax rate lower than 437? 1985, you say. 1985 is the last time the tax rate has been this low. That's remarkable. That's remarkable. Hopefully, this visual aid was helpful in you appreciating how remarkable it is. I'd enjoy going door to door. for 2023 is looking to go down a little over 8%. Well, what about the property tax levy? We know that's where the rubber meets the road. Tax rates can go up and down in part due to the programs and management you have on, but also equalized values, right? That, that has a big impact on tax rates. Although we sure like to see it get smaller, right? Even higher. What about the levy? Well, as I touched on a moment ago, we're looking at a 1.66% Post increase, but there again, what's your, what's our track record as an organization? And if you look at the last decade, our annual percentage change on average has been 1.29%. For some of the newer county board supervisors in the room, if you hadn't really studied this when you ran for office or you were wondering what kind of team you were joining, Welcome aboard. Is that incredible? As a whole, I think our community appreciates it. So very, very proud and pleased with teamwork that not only to a modest increase in the levy and a reduction of over 80%. 8% in the tax rate, but also pleased that we have a number of key areas we're looking to further enhance. I have found, and I think you would agree, that for the most part, the last five, six, seven years, we've really been trying to maintain our programs and services. With net new construction, we don't have a lot of flexibility. And right now, with inflation and everything else going on, it's becoming more challenging just to retain our employees. But every year, thanks to the good work of our staff, liaison committees, always investing more in the community. So this is a very high level. Those of you who are on the Health Care Centers Committee, thank you for your support and your leadership. But Kayla Clinton, our a Rocky Mill administrator, her team out there, we continue to struggle with staffing, no question. The county boards continue to make investments there, but we also are making some really wonderful investments in that facility. And it is the only five-star quality facility in Sheboygan County. That's a lot to be proud of. And it didn't happen overnight. Investments in staffing for corrections and emergency dispatch, this is real, I mean, we're feeling this. And the county board, once again, has stepped up. We're using ARPA funds for correctional staff, for emergency dispatchers at Rocky Knoll, as I just touched on, in order to recruit and retain, retain these essential personnel. And though they're important, we have a lot of important uh, staff. 
continue to make investments in that gun permit budget to maintain our correction staff and our emergency dispatchers. Can you imagine if we didn't have them? Can you imagine if half our dispatchers decided to go work for Kohler or Sargento or Johnsonville and do something that maybe wasn't as stressful and make a higher wage? And you need help? We have to maintain this staffing, just as we have to have good CNAs and nurses at Rock. <laughs> Repairs and equipment replacements at the jail and detention center. Uh, the sheriff has been very proactive in making sure we're taking care of that facility and folks like our deputy administrator how we continue to improve the jail, how we continue to uh, look to expand alternatives to incarceration, and we're making investments not only now, this year, but we are next year as well. We're making investments in our judicial system. The judges really came on pretty strong from three judicial assistants to five, and we stepped up. We delivered. They now have five, and that's thanks to folks like our clerk of courts, Melody Lorgi. It's Credit to the judges for being proactive and sharing the need, but bottom line is it's a credit to the county board for supporting it. It's your budget, and you've made that investment. Enhanced child welfare and behavioral health services. Sadly, there continues to be greater need in health and human services, and I think most of you are well aware of those needs. I'm really uh, looking forward to uh, Matt Stripmotter and the Health and Human Services Committee initiative on embedding these social workers and helping people more proactive housing, what have you. So glad to see that investment included in the budget. Mobile mental health crisis response pilot program. This is something that Chief Domogulski with the city apparently has had an interest in for, I think, a few years. But really, it was a certain part of team there. came forward as part of the purple. The common council supported of meeting up way with this new pilot program to help people with mental health needs and really take some of the pressure off our law enforcement officers and embed staff with the city PD to assist people in crisis. Tremendous. We're also going to be working with the sheriff's department and our dispatch officers. So at least one dispatcher, if not more, are more trained in this area. So we're looking to raise the bar and strength in this area. Maintaining and improving our transportation system. We're so lucky to have an outstanding uh, transportation director and team. Uh, we used to have about 120 employees working in transportation. Now it's closer to 95 or 96. But we still have a full operating transportation department doing road work, carrying bridges, maintenance, plowing the snow timely. We've got a great operation. And that's in great part thanks to the county board's support, providing that funding, implementing the half percent sales tax. For those who weren't here at that time, every single penny of the half percent sales tax is going to improve the payment transportation system. Direct property tax relief, and some of it we're sharing with other municipalities for their transportation needs. It was a great move, and it's really. We're also looking to make further enhancements at the airport. It's kind of ongoing, and fortunately, most of the funding or most of the projects at the airport are funded 80. Take good advantage of that continue to be looking forward and making enhancements to the runway, the, the tarmac, and, and uh, Matt Grenoble, and again, transportation staff doing a great job of that. Building improvements, we consolidated a number of areas. The transportation complex, who hasn't? I, I won't call you out. If you haven't been to the transportation complex, I think most of you have, give Greg a call and, and take a tour of that facility. We consolidated a number of shops. We were in Sheboygan. Now, obviously, we have a state-of-the-art facility, but Greg is continuing to look at the different sheds we have, along, obviously, with the support of the Transportation Committee that Supervisor Wagner is now chairing, before him, Roger Distruti, uh, and continuing to make investments there, timely investments to make sure that we can provide the support to our staff. 
Aaron Brault. <laughs> I've told him so many times he's probably sick of it, but if that guy um, isn't one of the best planning and conservation directors in the state, uh, whether it was his work on the Sheboygan River Harbor, whether his work on Amsterdam Dunes, um, trees, I mean, you name it, he's built a good team. Other again meeting the, the needs of the community but that's a proposed investment with leverage dollars grants already from the DNR and private sector and then finally we're looking to make roof replacements at the University of Green Bay Sheboygan our law enforcement center Jim to does such an excellent job looking down the road and making sure that we're not waiting until it's a problem or a crisis he's had a plan for years on replacing roofs and making sure we get things done timely and appropriately. We, we don't always get things done as quickly as we want, but I'm very thankful that Jim is looking down the road and making sure that we're, being, we're handling things responsibly. So that is a key high-end summary, but I'd just like to conclude by saying thank you. And I think sometimes, again, in these the government, County government can be a little bit under the radar, right? State, feds get all this attention, most of it not real, not real good. Sometimes I think the towns get beat up a little bit on some of the local issues they have or the cities or, or villages, but county government sometimes can stay under the radar. I think one of the reasons why Sheboygan County stayed under the radar care about this organization and community. And because when we need to problem solve, I know personally I can rely on you to step up and want to problem solve. And you're not pointing fingers at one another. You're not talking politics. And I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for our leadership team that's here this evening and their incredible dedication and all they've done to be part of this process as well. So with that, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Next is the public hearing on the 2023 proposed budget. The notice of public hearing was published on October 7th, 2022. And the public hearing is now open on the 2023 proposed budget for anyone wishing to be heard. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? One more. Is there anyone wishing to be heard? Seeing as how there are nobody, no one's wishing to be heard, the public hearing is closed at 623. Next is the review of the 2023 proposed budget. That I'm reviewing, um, going down the preliminary budget index. Uh, we're going to start at the debt service fund summary on page 27. Next, next. The capital projects fund summary, pages 28 through 29. Next. The transportation fund summary on page 30. Next. Next. Clerk of Courts, pages 39 and 40. I wanted to make a, uh, a slight question on the, uh, on the, uh, 
County Administrator's budget. Are, are we there yet? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. Oh, sorry. I we're not there yet. 30, 30. So, okay, I'll wait. Uh, Corporation Council, pages 41 and 42. Next. Now county administrators, pages 43 and 44. All right. I just, I just have one question. I, I noticed that there's no, uh, there's no budget in there for, um, for uh, procuring a, um, a um, somebody's uh, council on uh, giving a, a looking for a <laughs> Uh, is that financing in a different area rather than uh, county administrator? Correct. That would be in the HR budget. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. County board, page 45. Next. County clerk, pages 46 and 47. Next. Court Commissioner, pages 48 and 49. Next. District Attorney, pages 50 and 51. Next. Employee Benefits and Insurance, pages 52 and 53. Next. Finance, pages 54 and 55. Next. Health and Human Services, pages 56 through 58. Next. Human Resources, pages 59 and 60. Next. Information Technology, pages 61 and 62. Next. Medical, medical examiner, pages 63 and 64. Next. Uh, Non-departmental, pages 65 and 66. Next. Planning and conservation, pages 67 through 70. Next. Property and Liability Insurance, page 71. Next. Register of Deeds, pages 72 and 73. Next. Rocky Knoll, pages 74 through 76. Next. Sheriff. Pages 77 through 79. Next. Transportation Airport Division, pages 80 and 81. Next. Transportation Highway Division, pages 80, 82 through 85. Next. Next. UW Extension, pages 89 and 90. Next. UW, UW Green Bay, Sheboygan Campus, page 91. Next. Veterans Commission, page 92. Next. And Veterans Service, pages 93 and 94. That would be all? Yes. Seeing no motions, I declare the budget review concluded. Pursuant to section 5.06, subsection 8, subsection 8, the 2023 proposed budget 
will be referred back to the Finance Committee, which will submit its final recommendations on the budget at the November 1, 2022 County Board meeting. And with that, I believe we're at adjournment. Supervisor Testrodi. I move to adjourn. Thank you, Supervisor Testrodi. Supervisor Clark. I'll second. Thank you, Supervisor Clark. Please go. Supervisor Kocek. Yes. Thank you, Supervisor Schobert. Aye. Thank you. We are adjourned.